Good, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Lewis Reyes, and I am the Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Exchange. I know this is the second time you see me today. You're probably tired of my face, but we have someone special with us today. It's going to be awesome. This is the, the first guest of, of, of the kind, right, of this genre that we've, that we've brought on. But before we get to him, let me introduce my co-host for today, Julie Mitchell and Roy Montez, our Beefit Ambassador. How are you guys doing? Doing hey, great. Chief. Good to see you. Good to see you, Roy. Hi, Julie. Chief, doing well. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for asking. Let's, hey, let's get this going like a little too fast, too furious. Roy, let's introduce our guest. All right, Chief. We are honored to have a terrific guest with us today. We want to kick off the 4th of July weekend with someone who knows how to have fun. He is a world champion drifter. He drifts behind the wheel of the Monster Energy Ford Mustang RTR 5D. In fact, our friends over at Monster have helped us connect with him today. He's also a self-proclaimed professional fun haver. Please help us welcome Von Gittin Jr. What's going on, y'all? Thank you, uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate that warm welcome for sure. It's an honor to be here. Oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all. Ju Julie's, not, uh, Julie's not well, used I'm to doing this part. You gotta be so nervous, Julie, it's okay. 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 In my defense, <laughs> I usually introduce the guest and then Leah usually asks people to share. I'm like really embarrassed right now. So, okay, for all of you watching, drop us a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. Share some love with Vaughn in the comments and you can leave questions for him and we will read them to him live. It's also a perfect time to start your watch party so you can enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not already following our page, you should. You want to know why? Because Chief Chats are every Tuesday and Thursday. We have some really, really great guests coming up today. But right now we have Vaughn with us and we're going we're gonna to kick it off. Wow. Hey, Vaughn. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's terrific to finally meet you and have you with us. So first off, where are you joining us from? And what are your plans to celebrate this 4th of July? Yeah, so I'm uh, at my home office uh, above my garage in beautiful Maryland. Um, actually having my last, uh, last couple weeks here because my wife and I are moving down to Charlotte, North Carolina to be with uh, our team and create a new, uh, our, our next step in our journey. Um, and so for the 4th of July, I'm actually really excited. I'm gonna be home with the family. Um, it's one of the one of the benefits uh, that I've been able to to find out of the things we're all being challenged with right now, and so we're gonna uh, wake up. We're gonna go for a nice hike in the uh, park down the road, and then uh, I'm gonna go for a kayak run with uh, my cousin and my brother, and then come back here and uh, show my boys some fireworks and uh, just hang out and uh, and chill and and do the family thing. So hey, when you say fireworks, you mean like little sparklers or like the real deal? You got like the real deal stuff. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I mean, we, we got, a, I, I was in a, another state the other day that allowed us to get uh, a few of the big things that go boom. So I'm excited <laughs> to shoot a few things up. Um, you know, I'm very fortunate to have a, a big uh, quarry behind my house um, that I that I have access to when they're not working. And so uh, we'll go back there and shoot some things up in the air for the city to see. And, and then, uh, you know, who knows where the night goes, might break some toys out and Look, getting a little fun having, you know, you know, you never know what might happen. I tried to plan too much. He doesn't look like a sparkler kind of guy, Chief. He's I know, like, I know, yeah. I know. He's not a sparkler kind of guy. <laughs> got the yeah, big ones, yeah, the big sparklers, the ones that, yeah, like you said, go boom. Yeah, those ones for sure. <laughs> All right, Vaughn, let's talk a little bit of uh, motorsports action for a bit. Right. So I've been a, I've been a long time uh, fan of yours. I've followed you for about fifteen years now. And uh, you've come such a long way uh, from the inception of Formula D uh, into the seat that you're in now, the, the Mustang RCR spec. So uh, let, me, let me set the platform here. Uh, rewinding back to 2004, Formula D had just sparked uh, stateside for us. Uh, we know that it's been around for a much longer period of time with, with D1 and, and anime and things like that. So you know, growing up, 
cars and sporting events and um and and mechanics and and the whole realm of drifting was was my introduction to learning how to drive a five speed uh so i get together with a group of mine uh we used to you know we would go out we would we would do the meets we would do the car shows and and we would we would we were the weekend drifters if you will um we decided formula d was coming to a close city near us so we had uh, the great idea of driving about five or six or seven S chassis, 13s, 14s, down to uh, Houston, Texas, which at the time is about uh, three, 350 miles. So I, I know you're familiar with S chassis, and you can imagine how this amount of drive time would treat a car with that age. <laughs> nah, sure. So, so we, we've... Uh, you know, midway through, we had to stop a couple of times. We had our issues. We had uh, tire changes that we had to go through. We had overheating issues. Uh, myself, I was about a year and a half into a uh, 1990 Nissan 240SX hatchback. So I did my best to uh, type X 180SX it, but it, it failed. It was completely short of, of, that, of that platform. Uh, but we drive down, uh, you know, the interior strip, no AC, no power steering. I'm trucking down to Houston. And uh, we finally get to, to Formula D, the first drift event of, of, uh, of our experience in, in 04. And, you know, we're just, we're greeted by the amount of uh, just so many people with the same love and passion for cars, for the culture, for uh, just the community. And I remember being greeted by exhaust fumes and high screeching tires and the smell of burnt rubber. And if you're a drift fan, you know that this, you love that smell of burnt rubber uh, from, from any vehicle, much less uh, drifting. So I was fortunate enough to go down into the pit. At the time, you were able to meet the, the drivers. So I met a couple of, of a, a good amount of drivers at the time. And I remember scoping out all the cars. S chassis were big at the time. And um, I, <laughs> I dug through this box that I found uh, that I had from way back when. And I'll show you, I'm, I'm dating myself here because this photo is actually, uh, may look familiar to you. Yes. And, and it, I believe this may have been the first of your uh, <laughs> drift machines uh, yeah. to compete in. And I, I remember meeting you and I spoke with you and, you know, the car culture is very influential. So, you know, I, I'm over here asking you about parts, about, you know, bumpers and aero kits and, and things like that. We talked about your passion for the sport. We talked about uh, your favorite techniques and on how to initiate drifting. I was, you know, I was in, in I was just immersed in drifting at, at the time. Uh, you know, whether it was your favorite, whether it was clutch kick or power over or, um, you know, any initial, you know, initial way to, to, to get into your drift. But uh, just meeting you for the first time back in 04 and to come full circle and, and see you again here today. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a pleasure. So thank you so much. And it's great to see you. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's uh, that's an amazing story. I mean, I remember that event vividly. Um, yeah, that's my first car. I built that car on my back in my garage. Um, right. you know, I was working. I had a real life job working IT at the time, and sure. uh, I got a real life job because now I'm I'm living this dream. Try that one again. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have that car car literally downstairs in my garage right now. Uh, um, it's it's wow. had multiple paint jobs and <laughs> and uh, it's kind of just sitting there with no motor, but. Sure. I, I haven't been able to let go of it out of my life. It's just a special thing to me. Um, and yet I re vividly remember that event because my father, my cousin, and I trailered down to, uh, to that event on, open, on a flatbed. Right. And uh, we, I sucked in a, my throttle body broke and I sucked in a bolt and we had to pull the head off the car and I still was able to qualify and compete and everything but I remember that wow 16 years ago um I will say I don't vividly remember meeting you but I of love course. uh you know hearing the stories and it you know it feels good to know that um 
you know, after that 16 years ago, you still uh, think very highly of me. So I'm glad that, you know, I've always just been me uh, from 2004 to now through, you know, starting through all the success. I've always remained the guy that I am. And if you saw me today, I still have the same combo and um, sure. still try to have the, the same amount of time, even though that's become the challenge. But uh, no, that's, that's really rad. And, and I, you know, as you're saying this, I'm like, man, like, this is me and my boys, like everyone piled yeah. up in our, exactly. in our 240s, probably multiple of them had different colors on them they, because, you know, people they're never, they're paint never them, painted, but you just love, loved your car and, and that was your crew. So um, I relate to that very much and uh, very cool to hear that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you know, what's, what's, what's cool about that is, you know, meeting you and, and at the time you would get little postcards, like, look at this. This oh boss my here. gosh! Yes. With your, uh, you, you know, you were rolling with your 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 Drift Alliance, your DA crew, and uh, your team. And I remember getting these postcards. And what was cool about these cards was that on the back, or you would have all of the specs of the car. And so, from a from an automotive perspective, and from a gearhead, you would just you would dig into what your car, what performance parts, what aero pieces you had at the time. And you're going through your checklist, and you're like, all right, I'm gonna get this one. I'm gonna get this one. What does he have? That's what I want. That's what I need. And uh, sure enough, I ended up buying a, a 13 uh, coupe a couple of months afterwards. And, and this vehicle of yours actually had a big influence on, I think uh, this front bumper was the first bumper that I had uh, that I actually purchased to put on my car. So that, that, uh, that, that Bomex front end on yeah, my- uh, front. Oh, that's so sick, man. Yeah, oh, so, so it, it's, it's cool to see how you've progressed and how you've come from, from S chassis and evolved into uh, the, the Ford Mustang RCR. So going into that over the years, Formula D has become such a global organized platform for drivers to show off their power, their skill, as well as uh, parts and sponsorships that influence the car's culture all the way down to us, the consumer. Um, we'd love to hear your thoughts on the sport and how it's transformed throughout the years. Yeah, for sure. You know, for me, when I got into drifting, like, like a lot of people in the early phase, like I didn't even know about drifting. Like I was a car guy, you know, I got a little yard cart when I was four. My dad was a wholesaler, always bringing home these wild cars. And very quickly I fell in love with cars, but growing up, you know, I was skateboarding, BMX, riding dirt bikes. And um, when I was 18, I got my first rear wheel drive car. I mean, long story short, a buddy of mine bought a car from my dad at an auction. He, we took him to an auction. He bought a 240SX. And I drove that car out of the auction because I was the only one that could drive on my dad's tag. And we left that. I did a little clutch kick and just, you know, just like a little power slide. Sure. And he tried to do the same thing, leaving our college a couple of days later and put it into a tree. <laughs> so I bought that car from him and uh, it sat in my parents' yard while I just afforded to fix it up you know, during the time. Um, and uh, eventually that car became like a car. I just liked it. It was a two door rear wheel drive sports coupe, you know, S13. Sure, sure. And, uh, and, and we took that, you know, I used to go to industrial parks, do donuts and slide around. And as I was building it, I came across some videos in Japan of this sport called drifting. And I was like, this is badass. Like showing your style and personality from behind the wheel of a car. It was like skateboarding, with badass cars. Right. And so I, I fell in love with that mindset of like, wow, this is like a cool culture, you know, and obviously import drag racing was really big and street racing and stuff at the time, but I was very drawn to that. And uh, so I went to some organized drift events early on and realized that this skateboarding and motocross and um, these, you know, having fun doing donuts and power sliding and industrial parks made me actually really good at this sport called drifting and uh, I fell in love with the camaraderie. And, you know, it was just like this, like, right. it's like you and your friends at the skate park, right? Everyone goes, does a run. Everyone's watching. You come back and high fives and, you know, just right. good vibes. And, like, for me, I just fell in love with the culture and the scene. And, um, you know, at the time I was working an IT job, I was, I was making really good money. You know, this was 19, 20, 21 years old. And I just got hooked and uh, immediately just started dumping all my money into my car literally paying my bills. And then I had a drug habit of cars. Like it was everything. <laughs> cars, 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 cars. And, um, and so, you know, I made a name for myself on the East coast. 
um, got invited out to this event in California, the Nopi World Finals. And this was like, kind of like, I got invited and I was like, I never been to California. I'm a Maryland boy. And like, um, so I maxed out my credit card, shipped my car out on an open transporter because I couldn't afford and close. It was the first time I ever bought brand new tires. And, um, <laughs> but I went out there not only to do the event, but it was my opportunity to network and meet people. And so I came out prepared with, you know, decks of who I was and what I wanted to do. And um, that's where I met, you know, the first team I drove for, which was uh, Team Falcon. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you saw the car you showed, you know, mm -hmm. had their paint scheme at the time. And, um, you know, very quickly, you, you know, that first event was kind of funny to me because I met all these drivers in Japan I had seen on, on the internet. And, and being a guy from Maryland, you know, I'd never really been exposed to too many other cultures. I'm not saying Maryland is, you know, not plentiful of culture, but it wasn't my upbringing. And so, you know, like I met these Japanese drivers and I was like speaking caveman to them by hand motions and like, <laughs> but it was a, a really epic experience. And uh, that's where I met, you know, the first team I would end up driving for. And then, um, sure. you know, a year of Formula Drift in 2004, which is when that, that series started. And then in 04, Ford debuted that new Mustang, the 05 Mustang, when they went to that, exactly. you know, modern um you know more modern style with a little retro flavor and i was like this would be sick to bring some american muscle into drifting and um again to make another longer story short got in the sure. mustang very quickly fell in love with the car it was my first time feeling torque um yeah. i really fell in love with the community you know they welcomed me with open arms you know i'd grown up as an import guy um, and I certainly still have a special place in my heart for four cylinder turbos, which thank you Ford for bringing out the EcoBoost. Um, but, um, you know, I just fell in love with, with the Mustang and what it was. I mean, it's American icon and the community around it is just so amazing. And, um, you know, here I am 15 years later, uh, you know, have my own company that's focused or started being focused on Mustangs, you know, RTR vehicles. Uh, which is now focused on on all Fords um, that we can make more fun and enjoyable for for the you know like minded people and um, yeah I have a great relationship with Ford and and uh, it's just crazy how all this spawned from just chasing the dream and passion which I think you know for me is the biggest thing I like to share with people is uh, you know when you find your passion and that dream you know, everything else falls in place if you put the right energy towards it. And for me, uh, you know, it, it certainly has. So right now, Vaughn, I'm assuming that Formula Drift has been affected by the pandemic. So what's changed for you and your passion during this time? And when will live events get back on track? Yeah, so, you know, I've also been racing in Ultra 4 and off-road. Uh, my teammate and I, Lauren Healy, uh, we started the Fun Haver Off-Road team two years ago. And um, also a, a very large effort in Formula Drift, like you mentioned. And so, you know, for us, um, you know, speaking of it as like a holistic business that it is, you know, motorsport is a part of it. Um, but we like to focus on um, content as a, a really big part. You know, we can reach so many people and I'm all about putting smiles on faces all over the world <laughs> and content allows us to do that. Um, and so, you know, I love the live events. I love being with my people, but given that they've been delayed, we've created, uh, you know, uh, another plan to continue doing what we do, but being very focused on content. And so, um, you know, we've, uh, we've had, uh, a lull in events from March, um, and they're not going to start popping back up until August. Uh, Formula Drift does not start until September in which we're going to have, uh, four, four double headers. So we'll still have eight rounds in a championship, mm -hmm. but it'll be four locations, uh, St. Louis, Texas Motor Speedway, uh, Irwindale, California, and uh, Seattle. Uh, we're at Monroe Speedway. So that starts in September. But prior to that, uh, we've got some off-road activity with Ultra 4 happening and um, some fun content initiatives. Uh, we've got a really wild project we've been working on uh, under wraps. I can't speak too much about that will be uh, – coming out uh, towards the end of this month, which I can't wait for people to see. Uh, it's gonna be a game changer. Um, there's been uh, a lot of, we did a pay-per-view event recently with uh, Cletus McFarlane, who's a YouTube uh, YouTube uh, 
guy who's a huge, huge uh, car fanatic, but he makes some incredible vlogs and he's got a great audience. So we partnered up with him where uh, my partner or my teammate Chelsea and I did uh, two out of three like team grudge match where unfortunately, well, fortunately for him, he beat me. Um, and then we did a, a freestyle battle, which was basically like uh, Cletus has this facility called the Freedom Factory. And he gave us full reign to do a two minute like freestyle through the whole facility. So uh, we, we went and did that event. So we've just been staying busy. Um, you know, there's a lot of excitement around the new Ford Bronco, which Ford's debuting July 13th. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really geared up and amped for the world to see all the awesome things Ford's been working on with that. And uh, so, yeah, I'm really grateful to, you know, have such awesome partners uh, that, that get what we do and uh, have been continued to be supportive of us, you know, shifting and pivoting um, you know, aside from the, the law that that's within the contract, you know, this is one of those years that everybody's kind of got to adapt and conquer. And, um, you know, for me, my mission has stayed the same and that is to be entertaining, have fun and put uh, smiles on faces. And, uh, I'm, I'm fortunate to have a, such a great group of people surrounding us uh, that support that. Wow. Vaughn, uh, let me tell you something. So when we when were doing this interview, we had to call in the specialist because I know nothing about cars. So <laughs> we had to call Rory Montez in. I was Googling S chassis, RTRs, Ultra Fours, Cletus McFarlane. Uh, uh, uh. The only thing I know about drifting is, is Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. How real is that? Is that, is that legit or is that BS? I mean, uh, the, the, the core of it is real. You know, it's a movie, but like that movie was great for drifting, you know, because now the conversation, you know, oh, this is, you know, years, right? So everyone knows drifting now, but early on, right? you know, it's like, oh, what do you do? Oh, I do drifting. And it's like, what is that? And it's like, ah, well, when that movie came out, it became, oh, like Tokyo Drift. And it's kind of like, yeah, <laughs> like that. But no, like that's the culture, you know, it's like friends and, and, you know, internal camaraderie. And of course, you know, there's some beefs that come out of that at another level, but uh, focus on the positive. Like, yeah, like Tokyo Drift is people building cars that represent them and their passion and their personality, going out and driving those cars, whether it's competitive or just for fun. So yeah, I mean, that overall, when you take those things away is very real. And, and some of the great things about the sport that, that I continue to love um, you know, it's been amazing to see this sport, you know, and look at the end of the day, for me, car culture, I don't care what you do, what you drive I me, mean, of course, I mean, you should be in a Ford because they're amazing, but I don't, you know, I don't judge, I don't judge regardless. Um, you know, I'm just passionate about what I like as well, as well as anyone else. And, um, but, you know, the thing about this culture and, and car community in general is it, it's just that, right? It's community that's around a, a single passion. And as I'm sure you guys know, when you're talking on the same rope, you know, things just flow and it's just a, an amazing welcoming uh, thing. And so that's what draws me to the car community as a whole. And in drifting, you know, the act of drifting is one of the most challenging things you can do as a human. There's so many things going on. There's so, you're using all of your senses. I mean, it's sensory overload. You, you know, you mentioned it, right? Uh, right. It was, you know, tire smoke cars door to door inches from walls over 100 miles an hour you know it's just intense and i mean I, you know I, look i haven't been doing anything in my entire life consistently for 20 years i've been doing drifting you know and it's not because you know i don't do anything for money i do things because i love things and that the challenge and the constant you know testing yourself and pushing yourself to another level it, it's one of those things that does that Right. And so that's what I've found uh, that I love that. And so whether you like cars or not, I would imagine you can relate to that mindset of continuing to push yourself, trying to be better mm -hmm. and, and having a passion is something that you love. And, and that's where, you know, that's where the crossroad of, of drifting and motorsport and, you know, uh, chasing any dream is, I believe. Hey, Vaughn, so we know you love our nation's war fighters and their families. Our heroes would love to hear some words of inspiration from you. What can you share with all of them out there watching today? 
Well, without a doubt, you know, I've done some, uh, I've had the honor of spending a lot of time with our military. Huge thanks to Monster. You know, we did a tour a couple of years ago. Uh, we've always got members of military coming out to events and joining us. So I just want to, first of all, say thank you all for your service. I know you all hear that a lot, uh, but many, most, all of us are extremely grateful for what you guys do. Um, my, you know, my passion, my dream, what I do would not be possible without your guys' efforts and support. So thank you. Um, as far as any words of wisdom for our military, that's a, that's a tough pressure. But I mean, I think for me, you know, um, I think in general, it, it, whether no matter who you are, for me, it, it starts with being a fun haver. And uh, what, what that means to me is, you know, I'm a fun haver and everyone says, oh yeah, but you race cars and you have all these cool toys. But like, for me, it's a mindset. You know, uh, I get up, I spend, you know, 10 to 12 hours a day when I'm not on the road in this office, working on conference calls, doing emails. And I, I, I approach that with a fun mindset. I'm having fun today. And um, I think that right now with all the challenges everyone's having and specifically the military challenges you guys face every day, it's important to find that fun and focus on that. You know, some people might call it glass half full. Well, I just call it the fun have a mindset, fun have a lifestyle where, you know, no matter what challenges being thrown your way, find the excitement, find the thing that drives you in it and do it. And, you know, if and when you find that passion, uh, you know, chase it and live it because, you know, we only get to enjoy this life once. And I think it's all of our jobs to, to take that to the fullest. And, uh, you know, everyone's in the military for different reasons. And uh, the one thing that I see about the military is it offers an incredible opportunity, whether you're just in there for a short duration or you're in there for the long haul to really find what you're passionate about. And, and um, I hope that, that everybody that's listening that is signed up to, to support our nation is, is also supporting yourself and, and looking out for yourself and, and, you know, chasing the things that you want to chase uh, in addition to the things that you've signed up to, uh, to do. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's, that, that's my mindset. And I uh, hope, I uh, hope that shares or inspires somebody. And uh, again, you know, you are the ones that, uh, that I'm extremely grateful for and, and thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for those words, Vaughn. So as you're aware, right in the military, we have to be fit to fight physically and mentally. So how do you stay fit to compete and on race day, how do you prepare mentally? Yeah, that's, a, that's great. Um, and that's a key. So for me, very early on, I noticed that I was, uh, I was folding under pressure. I'd be out at practice, killing it. Then I'd come to qualify and I'd make a dumb mistake or competition. I'm like, what's going on? And I looked very closely inside and read a lot of books about sports psychology and mental mindset and, and things like that. And it changed my life and changed my career turned me into a champion. And um, for me, um, so, you know, physical activity is huge. Um, I sauna, right, which replicates me being in my race suit in a 140 degree car. Um, I uh, do um, some CrossFit um, and I have just kind of a training regimen that I've worked with a trainer to work out. Um, I do yoga. Some people may laugh, but my, what I have found in mental solitude uh, flexibility, mobility, and just a reset has been incredible. Um, you know, meditation and visualization is a, a very huge key of mine um, prior to races. You know, the brain does not decipher from, you know, when you get into that flow state, right? And you can get to it very simply by just focusing on breathing for, you know, a minute and you get into a nice flow Zen state. Um, and you can visualize activities, you know, whether it's you guys training for what you may encounter uh, or me training for a track. Um, you know, I just sit and relax and drive laps in my, in my mind. And, and that prepares you, you know, it starts to create muscle memory. And, and um, so that's been a huge key for me. Um, simple reaction exercises, um, you know, throwing a ball up against a wall and doing math while you're, while you're catching the ball and just keeping those, those channels all open, you know, it's all about movement and not letting, uh, you know, not letting those muscles get lazy. I mean, that's, that's what it is. Right. I mean, um, and so for me, um, you know, I have, have some routines. Um, I focus on eating, um, eating very clean, making sure that, uh, you know, I'm staying hydrated, 
drinking a minimum of, of half my body weight in ounces. Um, so, you know, again, you weigh 200 pounds, you do a hundred ounce of water minimum uh, every day, uh, which is more challenging than, uh, than you would think. Um, but uh, it's very important. And I've noticed huge differences um, eating clean. It's, it's changed my life, my focus, uh, my fitness and, and how I look and how I feel. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, quite a lot of things, um, you know, being a, a professional athlete uh, that, that you need to focus on, but I would imagine very similar for you guys. I mean, you guys are doing way more, um, way more physical activity than, than I am. I mean, I've got 1200 horsepower to do the work for me. And, you know, I see you guys walking around those 80, hundred pound packs on your backs doing work. I mean, when I visit the visit uh, bases, you know, I see, see you guys doing training and I'm just oh, unbelievably impressed with mindset and your guys' uh, commitment. Like it's, it's next level and inspiring to me. Vaughn, you're getting so many great questions and comments on Facebook. Number one, everybody loves you. Don't know if you know this, but yes, you have so oh, many guys. fans out there. Um, I'm just going to read some of them. Juan Morales, Juan Morales says, Vaughn, we know you love Savannah. Come visit us at Fort Stewart. Um, Justin Young says, Vaughn needs to come back to the Freedom Factory, which I think you talked about for a second there. Um, Alan Michael Patton says, Vaughn, you are absolutely awesome. You should visit Colorado Springs. Uh, Drift Pikes Peak, maybe. You're a huge inspiration, and he hopes you have a good day. Um, we have, let's see, Jim says, can't wait to see you sideways on FD. Morton Griggs says, hey, Vaughn, met you at Long MacArthur Ford in Salina, Kansas last year. Bobby Jeskin Jessink says, love to see your off-road race. Um, trying to see what else we have. John Forrester says, Vaughn loves all of us and stands with us. Big stand-up guy. So huge, huge, huge reactions oh, cool. hey, John. on Facebook. Everybody loves you. <laughs> no, thank you. And it's an honor. You know, uh, for me, um, that's literally what I live for. You know, I love, um, I love love. I mean, you know, um, it, and it's, it's just something that like, I, I'm grateful that my passion and my path and chasing my dream has enabled me to, um, you know, not only inspire some people, but give them good feelings and good feelings towards me is great. But overall, you know, I just want people to have fun and, and enjoy themselves. And, um, you know, I think you guys can get that vibe for me that for me, that's what it's about. You know, when I'm out driving and competing, it's as much about me and my team as it is you know, my fans and the people that are getting entertainment through what we do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just, a it's an amazing feeling. Um, and that love is, is awesome, which by the way, we are coming to Colorado for grid life in August, which will be right at Pikes Peak. And, um, I do hope to be visiting some bases this year. Uh, we had some plans. In fact, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, we're working on a very special Mustang build, uh, that will be given away specifically to military uh, through the exchanges um, and uh, not ready to release those dates because it's kind of in flux right now, but uh, will be this year. And we've got an awesome car that's only going to be available to uh, our, our beloved uh, men and women in our armed forces. So uh, I'm excited to get that announced and get that out there in the very, very cool. Future. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, to that is going to be cool. I'm I got a question here. I received, I received the question via text. It says out of curiosity, what he ask him out of curiosity, what he drives in his personal life when he is not on the track. Yeah. So um, I, I kind of get embarrassed by these questions because I've, <laughs> I've, I've acquired over, over a while, quite a bit of vehicles cause I'm kind of a hoarder of my cars. <laughs> uh, but right now uh, my daily is a Ford Raptor. Um, I love it. Nice. Um, it's nice to pull in the driveway and just drive it right out back through the woods and the quarry and jump it before I come in the house from travel or something. Um, but I've got a, I've got a, um, a couple RTRs, of course, in the garage. And um, something that every, you know, every time that I say it, I pinch myself. Um, but I am the proud owner of a new Ford GT. And I do take that out from time to time. It's not a car. I put a ton of miles on, but we've got beautiful back roads here in Maryland mm. that I take out for a rip. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a car enthusiast to the, to the core. 
and uh, I use my vehicles for what they've been built for and, and uh, what Ford has engineered them for, um, which is putting a smile on my face and anyone I can get in the passenger seat, so. Hey, Vaughn, so I know drifting personally has left me with a bunch of memories, a bunch of stories that I repeat to this day. Uh, do you have any favorite Formula D memories or stories? And uh, are there any, is there any one competition that stands out for you and why? Yeah, man, one. Ugh. So there's a lot of memories. I mean, the early days of, of drifting, you know, Drift Alliance, it was like, it was rock stars or race cars. I mean, we were out doing it big all over the world. Um, one big memory of mine um, is Pikes Peak. It's funny that that came up because, you know, this was when we first built the Mustang and we went to Pikes Peak and it was myself. Um, so my Drift Alliance bros and two Japanese drivers that like, I, that really are what like got me into drifting. And it was uh, Kaguchi son oh, and Yamamoto, Yamamoto son. Uh, and they were, they're my teammates. And yeah. it was still like pinch me moments. And uh, so I drifted with them up Pikes Peak, um, just up to the point where it was, you know, before they paved it all, uh, just up, I think it was called Engineer's Corner. And it was, it was sketchy. It was scary, um, and it was it was just epic. And so that was a huge memory that resonates with me. Um, my biggest um, competition, though, I mean, there's been some great battles and competition, but the one that will always stay with me, and it is just so – because it was so huge for me and drifting as a whole and, and what I stand for is, like, it being inspirational from a, from a, from a follow-your-dream standpoint – 2005 USA versus Japan. Uh, sure. First year I was in the Mustang. It was a, a um, event that basically all the top Japanese champions were at versus American drivers. And the Japanese drivers, you know, they're the OGs of the sport. 03, 04 came over and just whooped us. We're like, like we're little kids. And in 05, we had this event. And my team and I single-handedly ran through just about every past D1 champion, sent them home on the trailer, and won the event. <laughs> and that was, I mean, it was kind of the shot heard around the world in drifting where the organizers, you know, in, in Japan, you know, when you do something bad, like shaving your head is like a thing. And the right. organizer, like the main guy, um, I believe his name was Inada son. Uh, he was like the OG of D1. And he was just like walking around to all his guys, like kind of like plainly threatening, like you're shaving your head. Right. Um, but it was, it was crazy. You know, I was on the top of the car and Irwindale was just going crazy. And oh, yeah. it, it was just a, a launch pad uh, for me. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it made, a, 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 you know, to me it represented, you know, anything, you know, with passion and commitment, anything can be achieved. Everybody was laughing at me and thought I was crazy when I got in a Ford Mustang to go compete in drifting. And that right there was just like, you know? And right, so exactly. uh, for me, I, uh, I pride that, that moment. It's a moment I'm extremely proud about and something that will um, you know, ultimately live in history of, of drift for, forever. Um, but yeah, that, that was a great moment. Uh, thank you for that question though, to reflect back on that, certainly. No. Awesome. So tell us, hey, Vaughn, tell us about uh, being a professional fun haver. What does that mean? And what do you do for fun when you're not driving? Sure. Besides blowing up fireworks and hanging out at the quarry and going <laughs> to the back streets of Maryland and ripping it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, like I mentioned, being a fun haver to me is a mindset, right? It's as much a mindset as like physical act of fun. And so, you know, for me, being a professional fun haver is waking up every day and finding finding fun in what I do. Um, and for me, the kind of fun that I enjoy, uh, you know, family time, being outdoors, um, you know, obviously competing. Um, but, you know, being outdoors is something that has been just resonating with me so much the last couple of years, um, and which is what has brought me into loving off-road, you know, getting off the grid, challenging myself in gnarly terrains, whether I'm hiking them or driving a vehicle through them. Um, you know, that's, that's the kind of fun I've been enjoying. And, uh, 
you know, another fun of me that I guess a lot of people tell me I don't talk enough about is the business side. And, you know, um, you know, this dream and, and this, you know, we've got, I've got like 30 staff members now and out of this company that I started, you know, effectively started on the back, on my back in my garage, building my first car. And, um, you know, I really enjoy the business. I enjoy the fun of conceptualizing a project, pitching a project, selling it through, creating it with my team, watching my team work their magic to bring it to life and executing on it. And so, um, you know, to me, that's, a, that's, that's a lot of fun. And so, uh, you know, um, so in general, again, back to it, professional fun haver is a mindset and anyone can be a fun haver. This is not, Dave Vaughn's the only professional fun haver. <laughs> I'm a professional fun haver. And I take that title very serious. If I carried business cards, it would be on there. So, we're, yeah, I was about to say, where's our cards at? Our professional fun having fun. <laughs> You're more than welcome to make your own as long as you have a mindset. No, you need to, hey, you need to, you need to make them and then you can sell it. You can say, be a part of a professional fun having club. Well, you can go to funhaver.com. We've got tons of gear. Um, I mean, I know a lot of my. Oh, there's a website. Oh, a yeah, a lot of fun, fun haver.com. We got merch, we got gear, we got parts. Hold on. Um, you need to be included with that, Chief. I'm yeah. looking this up right now. I mean, you, that's right up our alley. Well, I know all of our people that are watching right now are a bunch of fun havers. And, and I've hung out with many of the men and women of our military. And there's one thing that is for sure they know how to work hard, but they also know how to play hard and fun hard. So uh, you, you said the website was a professional what? It's fun havercom Oh, so just fun dash haver.com. Right. Yeah. Fun dash haver.com. Yeah. Yeah. Roy, right. Roy knows. Come on. Oh, dude. my goodness. We're, we're He's not joking. Little, we're going to get a little care package out to you guys after this call. I will. I Look will at this. That happen. Fun, fun haver with the, I see it. Uh, with the rock, the rock hands. They even have a uh, coloring book, a car coloring <laughs> oh. book you can color. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I thought you were yeah. joking about this. This is like legit. You legitimately have like a site. Car parts, skate, coloring books, Instagram, use apparel. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I wasn't trying to like reach in your pockets today, but I mean. <laughs> hey, it's, no. hey, I, I, I was actually one of my yeah. next questions. One of my next questions was actually going to ask you what's ahead for you and any, up, any upcoming projects you'd like to discuss or talk about. Yeah. So this is a perfect segue into this. Uh, we'll start yeah. off with this. How did you team up with Monster? How did that relationship form? Yeah, I mean, man, like I think 2008, I started like beating down their door, like just inspired by what they were doing. Um, you know, they obviously have the greatest athletes in the world. And in 2008, you know, I obviously was very uh, confident about myself and motorsport and what I was doing. I mean, I won the world championship in 07. I'm like, I just resonate with Monster. Like their vibe is is fun and, you know, competitive and exciting and just high energy i mean monster energy i mean they're you know the best energy drinks in, in on the planet um and and you know i just i just resonate with them and i started beating on the door and finally 2010 i was able to make some magic happen and that's when i aligned with them and it's been a it's been a match made in heaven and um you know they're they're such a great group you know and like you know in 2008 i think if you looked at their stock it was probably a dollar and now i don't even know where they're at but like my point is that over these last 10 years, through all the changes and, you know, they've had huge changes, you know, growing into the company they are, but they still have their core values and the people that they support, obviously the military knows this very well, you know, Monster is a huge supporter of the military, um, but their athletes are their backbone and they've continued to support and just be the brand that, that I grew to love and still love. Um, they're so fun. They like doing things different. They're not cookie cutter. They're just cut from a different cloth. And, and, and so am I. And I think, you know, that's why they have such success. You know, their fans are not just fans of their drinks. I mean, obviously, you know, at the end of the day, the, the tons of different flavors and drinks is what their, their product, but everybody loves the brand and that's what gets them into uh, the product. And, and it's, it's not a hard brand to love. I mean, if you like cool stuff, you monsters at the top of it. I mean, look at what they do. Look at their athletes. They're involved in everything. Awesome. And so uh, for me, uh, it's been amazing. And uh, you know, I, I plan to, you know, 10 years, 
this year and I uh, plan to keep that rocking and rolling. That's uh, they're great. You know, they're great partners with the exchange. You know, uh, uh, we have a great business relationship with them and, you know, they're always out there trying to get us, you know, the best deals that we could provide for our customer base out there. Yeah. Uh, so I know the buyers always doing good things with them and, and, and thanks to everybody at monster, you know, supporting the military and everyone out there. So Vaughn, what else, um, what, what, what's ahead for you and what upcoming projects do you have that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, sure. So we've got, um, we've got, uh, let's see here, uh, heading out. We're right now in the midst of like a big a pre-production on a really big content event we're doing. We found this really, really cool. Um, actually, it's a uh, training facility that is used um, by the military and also private sector um, but we found this really badass facility. We're going to go out with the off-road vehicles and the on-road vehicles and uh, do some a few days of content creation out there uh, at the end of the month. Um, and then uh, coming up in August, we're heading to Colorado uh, Pikes Peak International Raceway for Grid Life uh, Festival, which is going to be an amazing event and actually one of our first events back out. Um, We've got quite a few other little pieces of content that we're creating here and there. Um, we've got one very special project that you guys will see at the end of the month. So keep your eyes peeled on my channels. I can't speak too much about it. Um, it is a Ford and it is a very exciting vehicle that makes some very unique sounds. And, um, and then, uh, so that'll be out towards the end of this month. And then, um, after that formula drift in September and ultra four all really kicks off and it's kind of back to back to back, uh, formula drift events, ultra four events, and then, uh, SEMA at the end of the year, which is, uh, as, as you guys may or may not know, is a, uh, a specialty, uh, aftermarket, um, where basically we go, um, we go every year, we have some fun with Ford out front, giving ride alongs, putting smiles on faces, which I'm hoping we can still do. Um, I believe with some masks and proper face shields, I'll still be able to get some passengers in the vehicle. Um, so I'm hoping we can figure out how to do that in a safe way. Um, because for, right, frankly, it's those passengers energy that keep me going for those four long days. <laughs> so, right, uh, right. And, and we've got a really cool special project uh, that we're building uh, for that event. Um, that will debut there. So unfortunately, I can't speak too much about the projects yet because I'd like to keep a little surprise. And then uh, hopefully, uh, like I mentioned, uh, we're building this uh, one of a kind badass Mustang specifically for military and exchange uh, as, a, as a sweepstakes for you guys. So my hope is that um, I'll still be able to visit some bases this year. It's going to be tough with the schedule. Um, this was already supposed to have been like in process, but uh you know, we're still gonna, we're still gonna try to make it happen. And uh, if I've got time, it's always, uh, it's always available to, to come out to see our, our military and, uh, you know, have some fun. So, um, but yeah, I've got quite a packed year. Uh, my, my, uh, you know, being home with the family is about to end. Um, and I've enjoyed it, but I'm ready to get back on the road and, and get back to, get back to fun. <laughs> awesome, Vaughn. So, I know SEMA, both SEMA and Formula D uh, at Texas Motor Speedway are on my list this year personally. But for our viewers, uh, where can viewers find you online uh, and your social media channels? Do you want to plug those for us? Yeah, for sure. We're super active on Instagram uh, at Vaughn Gittin Jr. Um, Facebook, we're also very active uh, at official Vaughn Gittin Jr. Uh, but those are the spots to, to get me. Um, Funhaver.com, if you guys want team merch or any cool gear. Uh, we've got cool 4th of July sales going on right now. So check that stuff out. And uh, yeah, come see me in an event. If you're at an event, I've always got time. Well, I can't say I always have time. In my mind, I always have time. <laughs> but if you catch me and I'm out of the car, we're having a combo, we're high-fiving, and uh, always happy to take a photo or chat or whatever. So um, please don't hesitate to come say what's up. Uh, especially if you make it to Texas this year, we'd love to have you. Um, please, you know, reach out to, to our team if you're going to make it. And we'd love to have you as a guest of the team, man. Uh, it would be awesome, awesome. To, to rekindle from uh, 16 years ago, walking around the car. <laughs> the romance of course. continues. I, I, I'll, give you that, I'll give you that parts list and you can help hook up your future Mustang. Um, <laughs> so I won't drive my S13 up 
I'll, I'll, I'll rent a Mustang. Got it. No, no, bring your S13. Like I said, I don't judge. <laughs> do you still have it? I do. 15 do you years really? now. I do, yeah. Oh, dude. I'll, I'll, I'll show you a photo of it. <laughs> Please do. Here's the bromance. It's, it's, it it's brewing. It's, it's brewing, it's Julie, the bromance. It's blossoming right before my eyes. <laughs> Jeez, this, this is how it starts. You could be driving down the road and someone at the light will, you know, yell over to you, hey, you know, nice car. And that's how it sparks. That does not happen to me in my Mazda. Sorry. Oh, I, I, you, <laughs> it's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> Yeah, I drive a Toyota, so I don't know. Any cool Toyotas? <laughs> That's our other car. That does yeah. not happen to us. <laughs> here, here you go, Vaughn, real quick. Oh, oh. damn, the two-tone, it's clean. <laughs> That's nice, man. Sick. That yeah. looks sick. That That's not what it looked like in 2004, was it? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Far from it. <laughs> oh, that's sick, man. That's clean. I 15 love 15 years of patience and uh, hard work, saving your pennies and uh, doing all the work. I relate to all of that, man. Congrats. All the wrench time. That's yeah. amazing, man. Congrats on you. Sure. <laughs> Thanks. Avon, hey, uh, you got any final words before we, uh, we sign off here real quick? I don't. Uh, thank you all for the time. Uh, again, thank you all very much for your service. Uh, it is greatly appreciated beyond what words could ever say. And uh, thank you for having me. I've enjoyed this. Uh, it's been a fun conversation. And I look forward to seeing uh, anyone that's watching or meeting you all in person uh, at some point in the near future. So yep. uh, let us know when you're in Dallas. Come by our headquarters and say hello. We'd love to have you. Okay, sick. Absolutely. We'll see if we can make that happen. Definitely. Stick around, stick around, Vaughn, real quick before we go, Vaughn. Thanks again for spending time with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for your support of our Airmen, Soldiers, Sailors, Marine, Coast Guard members. We really appreciate it. Hey, exchange out. Dallas out. <laughs>